This lecture is dealing with nerve injuries, the most common nerve injuries in the upper extremity. And I want to thank Matt Grothaus and Tim Hollistad for their contribution to this lecture. The AAOS books were very important in making this lecture. We start by the brachial plexus and winging of the scapula. From C5, C6, and C7 comes the long thoracic nerve. This nerve, if it is injured, it will cause medial winging of the scapula. The medial winging of the scapula occurs because the serratus anterior muscle will be paralyzed and the serrator anterior muscle is supplied by the long thoracic nerve. In long thoracic nerve injury, there will be medial winging and the scapular direction will be medial. In the accessory nerve injury, the lateral winging, the scapular direction is lateral. How about inability to do the OK sign? It means the anterior thoracic nerve or the median nerve in the forearm is injured. Carpal tunnel syndrome occurs by compression of the median nerve at the wrist. Which nerve is marked? It's the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve comes from C8T1. The same nerve roots will give you Horner's syndrome if these nerve roots are affected. Horner's syndrome had the classic triad of ptosis, meiosis, and hydrosis. And here you can see the construction of the pupil. Sometimes entrapment of the under nerve give us claw hand, especially if the lesion is below the elbow. What is the common site of compression of the under nerve at the elbow? It is the flexor carbi and nerus. Which nerve is affected by ganglion cyst around the shoulder? It is the suprascapular nerve. The only nerve that comes from a trunk, from the upper trunk. And you can see here, the suprascapular nerve gives branches to the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus muscle. When you compress the nerve at the suprascapular notch, then you can get the branches to the two muscles. If you compress the nerve at the spinoglenoid notch, you get the branches only to the infraspinatus muscle. So if the nerve is compressed at the suprascapular notch, you will get weakness in external rotation and with empty can testing. Here an arrangement of the brachial plexus. And you can see that from the lateral side, you get the musculocutaneous. From the medial side, you get the under nerve. And in the middle, you get the median nerve. And underneath, you have the posterior cord with the radial nerve and the axillary nerve. So what is the strong supinator of the elbow? It got to be the biceps, which is supplied by the musculocutaneous nerve. The musculocutaneous nerve supplies sensation to the lateral part of the forearm. Musculocutaneous means it supplies muscle and the skin. The muscles will be the anterior compartment of the arm, like the biceps and the brachialis. The skin, it is in the lateral part of the forearm. How about wrist drop? 
Wrist strap occurs when the radial nerve is affected. You can see the radial nerve marked by the red arrow. It comes from the posterior cord. So when we ask wrist drop can result from injury to a nerve number what? They didn't say number one. They said number four. It should be number one. Number one is the radial nerve. Number four is the median nerve. The one in the middle is going to be the median nerve. That have two branches leads to that nerve is the median nerve. What is the radial nerve function? It will be extension of the rest and extension of the fingers. So what is Holstein Lewis fracture? It is a fracture of the distal third of the humerus in addition to a radial nerve injury. And the incidence of radial nerve injury in this fracture is about 22%. In addition to the wrist drop, the patient will be unable to perform hitchhike sign. The question is which nerve is injured? It can be the radial nerve or the posterior interosseous nerve. The posterior interosseous nerve can also be compressed at the arcade approach, which is the proximal edge of the spinator muscle. Now we go to the axillary nerve. The nerve that provides sensation to this area is the axillary nerve. It also provides nerve supply to the teres minor. The teres minor and the axillary nerve have a great relationship because the axillary nerve gives innervation to the teres minor. And you can see here the posterior branch of the axillary nerve supplying the teres minor with innervation. And it is the same posterior branch that supplies the skin over the shoulder. How do you test for the teres minor muscle? It is the horn blower's test. In the horn blower's test, if you have weakness or pain against resistance, it means a positive test. Look at the position of the shoulder and the elbow here. The axillary nerve will go through the quadrangular space, as you can see here. And you can see the borders of this space in the teres minor up, the tear is measured down and medially in the long head of the triceps and laterally in the humerus. So I ask the trick question. A structure number two, which is the radial nerve, go through a space or interval, triangular or rectangular, to get it wrong. It should be the triangular interval. A structure number one is the axillary nerve. It goes through the quadrangular space. Here is a triangular interval, and you can see it contains the radial nerve and the deep branch of the brachial artery. In this diagram, you can see the quadrangular space at the top, triangular space also at the top, but the triangular interval is inferior. The liftoff test. What will give us a positive liftoff test? It is injury to the upper or lower subscapular nerves. And here it, the liftoff test is done. It tests the integrity of the subscapularis tendon or the integrity of the upper and lower subscapular nerves. Here is the teres major muscle. It is innervated by the lower subscapular nerve that comes from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. Note the space above the teres major. That's why it has two spaces above it, the quadrangular space and the triangular space. But it also has the triangular interval below it. 
Deletissimus dorsi muscle get innervation from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus through the tracheodorsal nerve which arises between the upper and lower subscapular nerves.